thank you padma for uh, uh, organizing this and getting me here on time with excellent services for travel and so forth and i'm grateful to chaturi as well for that uh, what i would like to do is to go through some you know quickly what i'm going to say and since we are on zoom uh, we might like to get people to respond on this and ask immediately whatever they want rather than wait for the end right otherwise i will get bored here right? and you also free kindly to uh, so we'll let you know yes yeah. and they can speak as well yeah and everybody can. will hear that would be nice now what i want to do is to uh, give quickly two or three words that we are going to use today uh, work life balance and then how to achieve these uh, the four speakers here will have different views on work and life and balance so we might each of us have to tell or discuss what we mean by these words uh, and for example uh, what does work mean or life mean for somebody of my age who goes to work i'm not going to work actually like in that sense but goes to work in a hospital or this is private practice because that is actually his life now and he doesn't know what else to do with his life so work has become life we need to see for different people what life and work mean but since most people are, are actually in their jobs now uh, i would like to give an example or take as an example a doctor who i am going to invent i'm i'm very frightened to give examples and stories because ah uh, he is talking about so and so might be a thought that some people uh, get and i have no idea i just invented these people right but i would like you to think about yourself as that person uh, maybe different from the one that i'm giving as example the example is uh say a 50 to 53 year old uh, high powered consultant and is busy 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 with the work and she is married to a big shot businessman big shot businessman is about 55 58 whatever somewhere there and he is director of companies he doesn't actually have any work to do in these companies because his father was rich and he's part of these establishments to give him work or a appearance and he gets a lot of money and then there's a son who is 20 and another person living in the house which is this margaret the doctor is margaret right let's use names that don't overlap with ours uh, uh, she is about 79 80 living in the same household and has some medical thing and that's why the daughter has brought her home she's she's okay she's there and there's a lady who does the cooking and help uh, lakshmi who's about 34 now let's talk about work first and we keep in mind what work means for these different individuals these different people uh, have different ideas about work they what work means for them and what life means for them work if you start with work and you ask people what does work actually mean i was thinking about this the advantage of having to do talks like this on very general subjects is that your world expands a little preparing for it right and i'm hoping people might actually pick up some idea that they remember after this 
which they find useful. That will be great. Uh, this is not just to entertain you for 30 minutes, <laughs> if I can. Uh, but also to leave a thought that is useful and to feel that I have not wasted half an hour of your, your life. Well, <laughs> with the Zoom thing, it doesn't matter. You can just switch it off and go away. So we are, we are okay. There are so few people here that I don't have to feel very guilty if I don't produce anything of much use. Now, let's see what this work means. And my thought was one way of describing this is to say, work is what you do when you're under control by other people. So your working means the time belongs to some other person. They run your life. You have committed yourself to do what they say. And it is work when you do things to get money. Maybe. Right? Uh, so you call something work because you get paid for it. You get paid for it. So then, uh, you know, I don't have to enjoy this. I have to live my life afterwards. And there's this separation of work and life as if work is something, something that doesn't actually belong to life. And for many people, work is the major component of time. And if they think life is something elsewhere, they're mucked up, right? This is where they're spending their entire work, entire waking life or waking time. And they're saying, this is not my life. My life is outside, which is going to work and coming back. Ludicrous. Work is life for doctors. Don't split it off as something to balance, right? If you don't enjoy your blessed work, you're not enjoying your life. Dead. That's where we spend our life, most of us. I'm working to enjoy life at some other time. This is our life. And when you're caught up in this, these are, there are traps in this. If all of your life is in this work setting, all these other things that life have to give, you have to get it in that setting. Sex. If you're very busy as a doctor, you have to find, and you don't have sex with your spouse, say, uh, you have to find sexual partners in these consultation rooms. And of course, no doctors don't do that. Or maybe they do, maybe they do it in their minds. Who knows, right? Or they don't have sex at all and it's being extirpated from their brain. That part doesn't work. That is what then this whole business of separating work as something quite unconnected to life leads to. Uh, let's think about life now, which is an even more interesting subject. <laughs> right? What is your life? It's interesting. I'm going to go to my slides in a short while. And in the meantime, I hope people will also uh, raise their hands or whatever they do in this system to interrupt me, uh, please. <laughs> and also chairs, please do that. Uh, otherwise, it just goes on and on. And tell me my time limits. Examining your life. The unexamined life is not a life. If you don't ever get to reflect on what am I doing with this life that I have got? then you might as well be like uh, my favorite example, a buffalo in a zoo. Fed, comfortable, physically okay. And you just leave it. 
the unexamined life is pathetic. Right. Uh, now, for example, uh, by, by examine life, I don't mean the kind of superficial examination of life that we do by uh, concentrating on our breathing and relaxing our muscles and then making our mind nice and clear and, uh, and so on. That's looking at the very superficial aspects of life. But what's the animal inside like? Do we try to actually fight recognition of who I am by concentrating on our breathing and our um, mindfulness? Right? All very good things, right? but sometimes tricky. Uh, now, even more interesting is the idea of balance. Life is really about balance. It is not having enormous amounts of pleasure. It is not earning thousands of dollars ne? Uh, a minute. It is not about creating new things, producing incredible feats of understanding and so forth, uh, living a life of meaning, helping other human beings. It is all of that. And learning to see which of these am I not occupying? Am I missing? Balancing is that. All of these are important. Therefore, we have to see now how shall we do this balancing business a little better as well. <clears throat> and then in implementing all these, we have to come to science and to use science. What indicators, and I'm appealing to anybody who's listening, uh, to think about this, a, a better balanced life for me will be seen through such and such indicators. I shall be able to see I'm better because I'm, I have indicators by which to judge. I have been having a running battle with some of members of our profession who come, who are at this moment recommending uh, further and further orders for people to stay at home to reduce COVID transmission. Now we think this is a science-based thing. That is just the technology component of the superficial component of this business, applying the known facts. The scientist has to use these facts and make predictions and say, if in two weeks, these, these indicators do not change at all, I have to go back and see whether my theory is right. You can't say that at the end of two weeks and say, only oh, we need two more weeks. If you keep extending like that, of course it'll come down somewhere. And we can say our recommendations work we have to give criteria by which we shall be found fault with if we fail. That is science. That is the science-based approach. Not forever to go on in faith that what we are saying is absolutely right, we know, and then insisting on explaining away any observations that do not accord with what should have transpired had our plan actually worked, right? A scientist is able to change her mind when the evidence shows that they're wrong. Now friends, when for, for our 
work-life balance thing also, if you're going to take a scientific approach, we need to have preceding criteria by which to judge, is my approach making my life better? And then you have the beautiful task of saying, what is a better life? What do I actually want? Or if not, we just get wound up as a toy train on a track and somebody places us there and we just go along the track until the wind ends and say we have had a good life. So we need assessment through criteria that we set ourselves. Otherwise, we are likely to keep going down that track, which is a very comfortable track maybe. But maybe we have missed a, an ecstatic track. Maybe we have missed a utterly more meaningful track. Maybe we have missed an incredibly more pleasurable track. Pleasure is important. Okay. And in this application, now I'm going to ask for your responses. And in this application, we have to look for what are the main determinants or contributors to better work-life balance, to better life. Here, if we think about that family, there is, for example, the personal, Margaret's own uh, drive. She's so powerful and well-known and has so many things to do. And she has always got some other goal to achieve. The family, right? What? What is, what is there? What are they expecting of her? Does she have to deliver? Then her peers. It's a community. What we call community is the kind of group that influences us and that we occupy or spend time with. The, the, what does the community think? What do all other doctors think? What do they think we should do? And that determines a lot what I do if I am one of 225 members sitting in parliament or actually sitting in parliament. They rarely sit in parliament. They show some speaker and some other people somewhere else come and sit behind to be seen to show that the chamber is not like the SLMA auditorium during COVID times. Right? This is what parliament is like when in session, right? Not very different from when it is not in session. If that group of 225 says, we want Prado Jeeps, and I think it's utterly obscene to do that and I'm one of the 225, I can't say it because I'm breaking the consensus here, right? All of them are doing it. I can't say, I don't want a Prado. So I used to go along. And after some time, I actually want it because I don't want to lose the opportunity. <laughs> and then there's society. If we had the right society, then, I would be ashamed to go and get out of that Prado in my electorate because I would feel what a despicable creature am I if that is how people saw us. Pathetic. I'm stealing from these people and I'm displaying it proudly. Sometimes in our private practice, we steal from patients in the same way 
by being given the equivalent of the Prado by various pharmaceutical companies. And we get off our Prado without feeling ashamed because society doesn't say, aren't you ashamed? Society should reject us, right? For stealing from patients, even if they can afford it. But we can't discriminate between the one who affords and one who can't afford. So we just go ahead. These are then the elements that contribute to my balance. Society, my peer group, the family, and of course my own, and of course another hundred and different things, especially the thoughts and ideas and moods that those who are more powerful than the supernatural beings govern my values through the internet and other kinds of media. Now I would like to ask and to discuss this further, uh, starting now, and also to put on my slides and then go along that. But before that, before the slides thing, uh, Chairpersons, would you want to see whether somebody might want to say something uh, or not? It says, yes. Yeah. Sir, nice to see you after some time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I can't see Both the question. school and undergraduate education never taught us those pleasurable tracks of life. That's all. Wow, no, no. Thank you very much. <laughs> Whoever it is, I, I, I can't yes, see them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any any other <laughs> queries about the subject? No. no definitely. Okay. Then may I go back to this? I, I have seven minutes left. Eight. Okay. We, oh, very good. Uh, I thought I was supposed to speak for a short time or, or a given time and then the rest is discussion. Right. Then let me put on these slides and ask questions from the people who are not asking questions or who will, <laughs> you know. Anyway, just let me switch this on. It's better that somebody else speaks and not type. Was an invention of the corporate world when they wanted to discard family friendly policies. Actually, there are some kinds of work where uh, the work time is soul destroying, it's drudgery. For doctors, this separation is really not so relevant because we are alive in our job. In fact, some people are more alive in their job than when they are outside their job. But for somebody in a job where you have to go on doing the same thing repeatedly every three minutes, it's the same thing, same thing, same thing. Uh, they are told, this is not your life. So maybe that is right. This is not your life. Uh, your life is the time you spend outside of work. Work is not life. That part doesn't belong to life. So don't worry. What a good uh, interpretation. <laughs> what a good interpretation of uh, how this is done. Uh, here's my invitation to everybody uh, who's tuned in. What does work mean? What does work mean for you, right? And what should it mean? Do spend a few seconds and see. Uh, 
what do I mean by calling this work? This is my blessed life. I spend most of my time. And if I don't enjoy it, if I don't find it fulfilling, if I don't think it is part of my life, but something I do to collect money only, to live later, then there's no time for you to live. That is one point. And I would ask you to reflect on that a bit. And this was my second thing, which is about what does life mean? Can I give whoever is listening 15 or 20 seconds to consider, think about in the context of the bigger thing that I gave, the totality, uh, what on earth do I want from this life other than being comfortable and mindful and calm and relaxed and happy? Uh, what is it to be a human being? What is it to be a human being? What is it to have spent 70 odd years as I have done? Why do we need to do this? We need to do this because if we don't, we are destined to spend the rest of our lives the way we have spent these 70 years or 72 or whatever. <laughs> In different people's cases, the number is different. Uh, and we are extremely scared to, and this is the big, big issue, to think, hey man, my life can be better. When are you going to then do the better life? So we aren't very keen to see the flaws in how we have been lead, leading our life because we think a day. 70 years have gone. I have to now somehow make this life appear good to me. Otherwise I have wasted my life or well, not really enjoyed it enough or not really used it enough or not really served humanity enough, etc. Then we are trapped in having to lead the next few weeks or months or years also in the way that we have lived it before because we are frightened to think that life could have been better. I forgot to divorce this person 30 years ago. Therefore, I must say it was wonderful, right? Because I want to spend the rest of my months also with the same person. Forgot. I didn't even think about it, didn't reflect. If you're lucky, you have thought about it a bit earlier, before 70. And <laughs> not all marriages are like that. I think about 25 or 30% of marriages are good, meaning that the person probably has a better time in this marriage than if the person had not married. The percentage where it's a bit of a punishment. It's a guess and it should be an informed guess. Maybe some doctors are listening here who are not, maybe no doctors are listening, who are not married yet. Put down your criteria. Be the scientist that I'm asking you to be. Put down your criteria for assessing in three years after you get married. Has this been a good deal or a bad deal? If it is a bad deal, give it up. Don't get trapped for another 40 years. Put out your prospective criteria and judge based on the actual experiment. Don't have children in those three years. Or maybe I need to try how that is because that is what marriage, when have children and say, look, I'm going to review this in another 18 years or 20 or whatever. Or just go along the track 
don't be a scientist. Anyway, that's a nice track, right? Pause a minute now and think. My automatic response is, I have got the balance right. So I will not dare think this can be improved. And it will not improve. Have I got, what have I left out? What am I doing too much? What am I missing? Am I missing, I'm just <laughs> thinking aloud here, uh, am I missing a strong enough spine? Am I always servile? Always trying to be popular with everybody? And I'm successful at it. And what have I missed as a result? Am I always abrading, abrasive? and trying to push people uh, into my view and being a pain in the rest, right? Should I change? I'm constantly looking at this. Uh, you know, having little spikes and warts and so on in, in, in you and if you go through society, these, you know, they, they snag these, these protrusions. It's much easier to withdraw them all and be like a nice round pebble. You don't get caught, bits of you don't get caught up. Now I know how to live that life as well. And it is through a choice that I should decide what is the level that is right for me. And that choice should be based on trying the different things and checking which is more satisfying. Life is not a control trial. So you can't quite do this versus that. But you can try to do the sort of control trial where it allows. <laughs> you can't try 20 years of marriage and then go back and try 20 years of not marriage. Right? It's not available. That, so it's not always possible, but do think about the business of balance. Balance is what it is. For me, it is not bliss. It is not suffering. It is not service. It is not family. It is not wealth. It is not joy. It is all of these. And getting the balance right. And on the indicators, we need three minutes left or how many minutes left? Okay, on the indicators, uh, uh, efficient way of improving is not just trying to improve the end result and using the end result as your indicator. The efficient way of improving is looking at the changes in the determinants. So for Margaret or you as the doctor, uh, what are the determinants of uh, well-being? The family say, I, I, we, we discussed about her, 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 the individual, but what about this household? This husband, the mother who is constantly irritated with the, the lady who is cooking, Lakshmi, because the mother knows that the husband is having some relationship with the, the lady who cooks. And she's trying to be nasty to her in between uh, times of meditation. And Lakshmi may be the 
maybe. And then there's the son who uh, isn't really very interested in studies. And they, uh, so he knows he's going to do well. He's going to get the same kind of happy, uh, powerful life that his father is leading because he's from that kind of family. So he doesn't actually have to work and sensibly he doesn't. Uh, but Lakshmi is the spiritually most advanced person here perhaps. And we need to look at those kinds of things, right? She hates this, well, sorry, this doctor's mother hates her and is nasty to her. But Lakshmi doesn't put some uh, or ganj into her food, which she can very easily do and say, I'm getting my own back because I'm contaminating her uh, lunch. No, she's too advanced for that. She doesn't steal something from Dr. Margaret, right? She can. Margaret won't notice. She can take from that household every time she goes home for the two days she gets with her daughter of eight, uh, something from that house and no one will notice. She doesn't. She doesn't. We may all be able to get lessons from uh, the people we think aren't equipped to teach us. Because we haven't got the elements that we are trying to balance in life. In our, shall we say, pie chart of the segments, the elements that constitute life. The missing segments of that we don't know. So that's one. Two is our peer group is another determinant. They tell us what to aim for, what not to, what to be proud of, what to be ashamed of. And as I said, there is also the uh, society. Now, on this subject, can each of us now try to think as a peer of so-and-so? How can I make her, how can I make him get a better balance between money, pleasure, and uh, being humane. That person has missed it. Should we only criticize him in his absence? Should we refrain from naming people when we discuss because it's rude? Or should we actually name them all the time in our private conversations, but never say it publicly so that the person never hears what we really think, but they are all saying things behind our back. Actually, though we say behind our back, I don't know why that expression is called behind our back. It should be in front of our back. Behind our back will be again in front of us. But anyway, let's say behind our back. Uh, and then the intervention. Start with, and I'll end with this. Start with the assessment. Do it now. Do it now. How, now, now. My life is perfect, maybe wrong. My life is perfect, maybe wrong. If you can bit that thought into your head, like our recommended remedies for preventing COVID may be wrong. Inject a little bit of humility driven by science and the willingness to look at the possibility that we are wrong. And how can we, as a profession, help 
those members, I'm now looking at the second item in this slide, uh, those members who even they might admit have got the balance wrong. What is the kind response of the SLM? Ah, here we are. What is the kind response of the SLM to nudge human beings who will otherwise forever, they are not going to come for counselors and blah, blah, blah. They are very happy with their sad life. Now that may apply to 5% of our membership, right? I may be in that 5%. Now how are you going to help me? How are you going to help me? How are you going to push me a little bit out of my complacent, self-satisfied misery? That is what the collective might like to address. All of these require more thought, more action, uh, and feedback, and feedback. And these were the principles that I was actually expanding upon, which I'll leave for 30 seconds. And then we can turn off these slides and get back to the non-slide. view. So there is an interesting question here from uh, Asita from Kakirava. Nice to hear you again. Please tell us about your life. What an inspiration again. Questions. <laughs> Actually, these are wonderful also. Uh, but, uh, well, I would say, I hate to talk about myself in that way, uh, because if I set myself up as somebody, like a preacher, then I am st stuck in it. I get stuck in it. Because I'm teaching other people how to live, right? Teaching other people is actually learning oneself how to live. So my answer to Asita is, well, I'm still trying to learn. And uh, therefore enjoying it. Uh, thank That's you. not a question, it was a comment, right? Yes. But he wants Thank you. From your life. Yeah. Right, sir. Okay. I say that again, Padma. Thank you very much for a very thought provoking uh, type of a presentation. Uh -huh. the, uh, uh, I think that what you uh, said, what SLM is doing, and what uh, is happening at the community, and what li our life is, actual real uh, problem in our today's day to day life. Uh, my concern is that, as you said, that the lack of role models, the even among the seniors for juniors uh, is an issue uh, because that, uh, I mean, say from child to politician from the community and even among the medical profession from uh, senior to junior, the uh, lack of role models are an issue. Uh, so it, it may, uh, I just do not know how much of this could be rectified by implementing or enforcing rules on, say, for an instance, that uh, I, I personally believe that we, none of us had time to, uh, in and out, we never had time for us to, uh, uh, in our profession. So, I mean, partly because that our life and work are the same. I mean, we never had that. And uh, I think that when I'm in mean, sort of a, uh, I, I myself could be happy the way that I'm in say when I, uh, uh, with uh, uh, ref my own reflection, but then uh, how many of us could uh, uh, be, uh, I sort of agree with that. And then how many of us uh, has uh, set by example uh, uh, for the other juniors. Uh, so all these are issues. So what is your in general opinion 
on uh, at least um, rectifying to some extent is it by enforcing the things or is it by I, I just do not know from where to start because uh, 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 everything is in disarray. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Uh, now it's customary to say, uh, that's a very interesting question when you don't know the answer. <laughs> that's a very interesting question, Padma, right? Uh, Thank you for that. Now I'm trying to think out, but, but how can I answer this question? Uh, well, uh, this is a, the thought that has struck me in these last 10 or 15 seconds, is role models of what, right? Is, I think we are short of role models on display on television. We are not short of role models in life. There are four or five people in this room. Uh, I'm saying to the people who are outside there, they're all capable role models, right? They don't strut on uh, the media all the time. So we don't see the enormous number of wonderful people we can actually learn things from, get ideas from, because they are not on display. So if you want role models, look around where you live. In that household, Lakshmi is a role model, right? We don't put her up because she's not famous. If I'm looking for people who are honest and who are happy, she's the happiest person in that blessed household. Now, she can't, she doesn't qualify as a role model because role model has got defined. I don't know where I am going in this answer. Right? Role model has got defined as well-known people. Cricketers, some come to mind, right? So, uh, no, avoid them. Avoid them is the answer. And look for the role model in your midst, in your neighborhood, in your household. The patient mother who doesn't ever get a break from the daily drudgery and doesn't complain. Millions. We must get them up on stage. There's no shortage of role models. There's a shortage of attention to the wonderful majority who suffer all this uncomplaining. That's a good point at which you stop. Yes. Uh, any questions? Yes, no, no, the, from the audience. There's Are somebody raising the hands. We can't yeah. hear. We, we actually. Hello. Can I ask a question, madam? Sorry. Hello. Can I ask yes. a question now? Yes. Yeah, yes. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm Dr. Handagala. I'm a thoracic surgeon, a busy surgeon, and a um, uh, question, sir, with regard to this work-life balance how content you are, I think it's a dynamic thing. And when you are a child, you look at your parents or teachers and you, you, you get the concept. And when you are in the university, you look at your lecturers and then probably your consultants during the clinicals and you, they are your role models. And when you are graduated and when you are a consultant, you look at your peer group and your senior consultants. And when you are closer to retirement, I'm now 50 plus, Closer to retirement, you look at your retired consultant and those are your role models. Rather than doing a sort of a scientific exploration, I think we, we look at, we get these examples and you set your goals. Uh, I know I really appreciate what you said, but that's how uh, my reflection is to this uh, uh, concept of work-life balance. Thank you, sir. 
Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, there is still a little proviso to add to this, which is uh, there is a nurse in this ward who might be a much better role model than me when I'm working there. It depends on what we are looking for in the role. What are we looking for? We are a role model of what? Role model of joyful life. Role model of a life of meaning. A role model of making the best use of your sensations and pleasure and the avenues available of that. I think there are few, too few of that kind. People who are pursuing symbolic pleasures and forgetting the real thing. I think it might be good to look at people who enjoy their sensations. Panchaskande. Or oh, no, not Panchaskande. The senses, the five senses, or the six. Just lying waste. Ninety percent of the time. So, if we know the feature for which we are looking for a role model, then we can find them. Thank you very much. No, that. The, if you could ask this, this is a difficult question actually. The, if you could answer the title of your presentation. How the profession can help us balance work and life issues in two minutes or so. Thank you. One way is for the profession to constantly, constantly look at the corner of our spectrum that soils it and see, we have to clean this shit. They have to be dealt with. The, the corner of our profession that soils it. Make that part of our agenda. The soilers are usually powerful. The soilers are usually loud. The soilers are usually insistent. And the soilers are usually deaf. So we have together to not let them get away. I think that is a good place for our profession to start. Otherwise, we become like them. Only five people ask for the Prado in the parliament. Now 220 want. The other three also want it. Oh, I'm, I don't forget the numbers. <laughs> but they pretend they don't. Uh, they don't reject it. Uh, that's even worse. Being uh, total, I don't know. Leave that out, right? I wasn't actually thinking, I was trying to suppress the word that was coming, coming, almost coming out. That is one thing. The second thing is, as a profession, thank you for this question, Padma, I will think about this further and email you, uh, uh, is to look at the wonderful members in this group. Right, the wonderful members in this group and give them a voice. Good people don't insist on pushing themselves forward, on speaking out. They prefer to go into the background. Insist of insist on giving a voice to people who are good and nice and too nice actually to speak 
evil. Various other thoughts might come to my mind, but these are two, to deal with these two elements and to make this a part of our conversation. Thank you. Wonderful.